Hi, this is Donna Dracunas, and in this video, I want to show you how to make an opening to put a peasant thumb in a mitten. This is called a peasant thumb because it was an easy kind of thumb to make. If you look at this mitten, it's the same width all the way up from the cuff to the tip shaping, and there's no extra stitches added in for the thumb. So it has to be wide enough all the way here to fit in the widest part of your hand. And when you make this kind of thumb, you just make a simple opening and you add the thumb later. So the whole mitten is knit is a straight tube except for that little opening. So let me show you how to do that. Here's a mitten I'm working on and I've got it set up on my needles. I like to work on double points, but you can do this on two circulars or magic loop. And when I do double points, I like to put my stitches on three needles and knit with the fourth, but you can also work with four and knit with the fifth, whatever you prefer. Right now I have this split into three sections that aren't equal because I wanted to have the back of the hand in one section and then the palm in another section. So I have 12 on each of these needles for the palm and 24 on this needle for the back of the hand. I'm going to work across the back of the hand and then when I get to the palm I'm going to put the mitten thumb hole and on one mitten it will go on the first half of the palm and on the other mitten it will go on the second half of the palm so you get one for your right hand and one for your left hand. So let me get my knitting a caught up to there and then I will show you how I make that hole. Okay I'm up to the palm stitches now and I'm going to start working across and I'm going to put the thumb hole on the first half of the palm for this one and if you lay your hand down with it you'll see with my palm up and the thumb on that side that will be my right hand mitten when I do the thumb hole on the second side of the palm it'll be my left hand mitten but it really doesn't matter which is which as you're knitting them as long as you make one of each that sounds obvious but a lot of times I mess up and <laughs> make two the same so pay attention all right so I'm gonna knit the first stitch of this because I'm gonna that's what my pattern says it will pattern will tell you where to put the hole and in this pattern it says uh, go to the palm knit one then I'm gonna t set aside um, 10 stitches for the thumb hole and then I'm gonna uh, cast on and knit the last stitch so my thumb hole will be right in the center of that side of the palm. Watch how you do that. The first thing I'm going to do is set aside these 10 stitches and I've got a tapestry needle with some contrasting color scrap yarn ready and I thread it and then I just take those 10 stitches and slide them onto this. You can use a stitch holder or a safety pin if you want. It doesn't matter. I like the scrap yarn because it seems to get in my way less when I'm working on the mitten. So there, I've taken off the 10 stitches. You can tie these in a knot, tuck them inside, whatever you want. Nothing important about it. Now, I have to get from here to here. And I need both colors to get across. So I'm going to alternate colors and use the backward loop cast on to put on 10 stitches. You can either follow your chart or you can just do A, B, A, B, A, B across. This is going to be inside here. So it's going to be right here inside where the thumb joins the hand. So you really won't see it, but it's up to you if you want to follow your chart or just do A, B, A, B. I'm going to do A, B, A, B. So I'm going to do one stitch, backward loop cast on with this color. And then one with this color. I'm not very good at this cast on because I don't use it a lot. But you just make a loop. Some people do it with their finger. Some people do it with their thumb. Some people call this the E cast on because that's what the loop looks like. You put it in the needle and you tug it. Then because we have the two colors, we're switching. So you just make that loop, put it on the needle, tug it. And we want to have 10 new stitches because we put 10 aside for the thumb. And I'm not counting as I go, so I'm going to have to check in a minute. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I have ten stitches. And now that's going to get me across that thumb loop. I'm up to this last stitch. And whatever stitch it, color it is on my chart, I can knit with it. And then I will continue across this needle for my regular pattern. And you can try your mitten on now, which you wouldn't think, but you really can. So I'm going to finish across here and then go halfway across the hand because it's easier to try on when it's on uh, four needles instead of three. It just makes the shape that's easier to get on your hand. And I'm just knitting this little pattern I made up for this demo, but you would be following your chart pattern. You've made that hole. All right, now I'll just go across half of this needle and then I'll try it on and show you why this technique is the one I use sometimes. Because there are other ways to make a thumb hole and I'll show you one more. But with the other one that I use sometimes, you can't try it on. So that's the downside to it. All right, anyway, I've got about half of the way around. And now you can see I've got the hand here and my thumb hole there and I can take my hand and put it in there and see if it fits see if this is in the comfortable place for the cuff to end right at the bottom of my palm and then to reach up to this part where my thumb joins my hand if it's not long enough that's going to make your mitten not fit good. So you'll want to go back, tink it out, and knit a couple more rounds to make it longer if necessary. And the cuff should be right down where your palm joins your arm, and this should be where your thumb joins the rest of your hand. And it's going to be a little snug because it's stuck on a straight needle, but you can see that it's, it's fitting there. If it didn't fit this palm part was too short. See, my cuff would be way up on my hand. That means that you don't have enough length here yet. But if you can pull it on comfortably, and this rests at that join where your palm ends and your arm begins at the wrist, then you're good. Okay, so that's the one way to do that. Now let me show you the other way to make a thumb opening. Let's just pretend that this is the palm because I'm up to here and I can knit it right on there and use the same sample. So the other way would be to say I need to do these 10 stitches as the thumb opening, okay? So we're making that up because it's just a little demo, but I want to show you how you make it. So the second option is to actually knit those stitches with this scrap yarn. So let's say right here is where I need my thumb opening, and now I need to do 10. So I get a piece of the scrap yarn, separate color, really easy to see, and I'm going to knit 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I know you know how to count 9, 10, but sometimes I forget. Okay, so that's going to be our thumb opening. But again, our working yarns in the colors that we're actually using are way on the other side of the thumb opening. So what we have to do is slip these thumb stitches back onto the left needle and then we continue in our pattern working as charted on that row and we re-knit them with the real colors that would be in our charted pattern. So let's just get across this needle and I'll show you what that looks like. And you can see my scrap yarn got pulled a little loose there, but that's okay. Once I get across here, I can tug on these ends. I can knot them together or whatever. So here's what this kind of thumb opening would look like. It's just a row of scrap yarn color in the middle of your knitting, and you just continue knitting on after that. The advantage of this is later we'll take the scrap yarn out, and we'll have live loops on the bottom and on the top of it. But we can't try it on because there's no hole. This version that I did before, we can try on. 
The downside to it, which is only minor, is that we don't really have live stitches on the top. We're going to have to pick up stitches into that cast on edge. But I think that for most of the times for me, the advantage of being able to try it on before I continue on to the hand to make sure that this comes at the right point at my wrist right here at the bottom of my palm, that's really important to me. But you can choose either one. You can measure it kind of to see if it's going to be in the right place by laying it on your hand if you can't try it on and you can line the top of your cuff up right here and see if that opening comes about there but I always like to try it on for real anyway that's it for making those uh, markings a hole or a potential future hole for the thumb opening